Hey guys, it's Seagrove. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're doing a video on goal making and reaching your goals. And uh, I chose to do this video because at my work, we have to make goals because it increases performance. So I thought, well, I think that's a good topic in Pokemon. I bet people who succeed do that quite a bit. Um, so I got some really good interviews here. I hope you'll enjoy them. Um, and especially this time of year with uh, internationals coming up, people are going to be looking to next season very soon. And um, I thought this would be a good time for it. And then we're going to follow it up next week with a video about how to build your world invite. So um, I hope you all enjoy this. But before we get into the interviews, I had some people ask me last time why I didn't talk about myself at all. So I'm going to do that very briefly. And the reason is because I'm not as good as those people, but I'm going to do that very briefly today. Um, a couple of my goals for this season were, number one, to get 300 championship points, um, because I thought that was a, obtainable for me since I don't travel very much. And I have one cup left, and if I get that, if I get first or second at that, I'll meet that goal. And then my second goal was to get um, 1,800 premier rating, um, and I did achieve that. So I was very proud of that. Um, but last thing before we get into the interviews is um, about making good goals. There's an acronym, uh, SMART goals, and it comes up in one of the interviews. Um, so SMART stands for, these are good, good goals are SMART goals. Um, and there are other good goals like I want to improve. That's a good goal, but it's not uh, a great goal for, even though it's a good, a good thing to want, and to work toward, it's not a great goal, and I'll go through the reasons and you'll see why. It needs to be specific, goals need to be specific, because it's S-M-A-R-T, smart. Specific, um, measurable, and getting better isn't measurable. Um, exactly, I mean, you can say results and stuff like that. Um, achievable, like you need to be able to say, I met the goal, or I didn't meet the goal. Um, relevant is obvious, and then time bound, like. I'm going to get 500 points by the time, by internationals, or something like that would be a, a good goal. But um, anyways, I hope you all enjoy these videos and learn as much from them as I did. All right, we are here with Rahul, and um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for anyone who doesn't know you. Hey guys, I'm Rahul. Uh, I've been, I'll just do like a little brief background, I guess. I've been playing for probably six years now, uh, competitively for three, and uh, I live in Basel, and I, I like Vespaquin. <laughs> <laughs> you broke up for a little bit there in the middle, but um, how's your season going? Are... Uh, it's It's been a pretty good season for me. I've, I started the season very strong, and took a little bit of a break in between because of school around the Thanksgiving Christmas time, mm -hmm. so I missed a couple regionals there. I did not travel to any ICs this season so far, but I was able to. Uh, I'm pretty much almost at a thousand points, so I've, I think I've had a pretty good yeah. season. You're, are you locked in for top sixteen? Not at all. We the I'm I think nineteenth right now. Okay. And we think the current cutoff is going to be probably around eleven fifty after uh, national settles the dust. So, so I would need ideally a top eight. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Um. Good luck. Yeah. Um, so, what are your current goals for Pokemon, both um, re uh, seasonal goals, long-term goals, and I guess you have a, a short-term goal of top eight. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess I can do, like, beginning of the season and, like, end of the season type of thing. Like, when I usually look at the beginning of a season, I usually set my season goals to... Um, I'm going to play like super seriously to this point, And if it doesn't work out for me, I'm going to like transition to like a fun aspect, but like, okay. and if I ever been like a fun deck, it's like, I'm going to, I want to have fun, but like nobody, hate, like everybody hates losing to an extent. So you still got to like know what you're doing. But my, like my, this season goal is to pretty much have a big, big showing at worlds, obviously, because this season's pretty much coming to a close. Um, NAIC and worlds are pretty much the last two big tournaments left and uh yeah doing well at both would pretty much validate your entire season thus far because like if you do well all year and don't do anything in worlds it's it's kind of 
your name will go unmentioned. Like you have to do it again the next year. Right. <laughs> um, and like my long term goals are pretty much to, I like to, I, I want to do well again next year, and I want to have another breakout year. I don't think, I hope a, I have a season again like this one, but um, it's pretty much to stay dedicated, not get complacent, and right. not get cocky. Really, like if I ever start finding myself saying like, oh, I don't need to test, or like this will be fine. That's where. I think I'll start like having problems. Right. So uh, I have to like make sure I don't do that. <laughs> what are um, the important aspects of goal making? Um, so as a player, you should always understand where you stand thus far and how you understand the game, how you um, kind of approach the game. So for a player who's newer, um, you're like as crass as it may sound, your like immediate goal shouldn't usually be making worlds. Right. Like, that's the end-term goal. But your immediate goal should be improving as much as you can and just learning and becoming good with a certain deck. Um, like, there's there's really no rush in, like, becoming good. You can, like, take your time and, like, learn all the game before you can get good. Like, take a year or two, uh, like, a season or two. Or, like, if you start in the middle of the season, take the rest of that season and the beginning of the next season to learn how to play the game. Right. Learn what's going on, the aspects, and um, repetitions. It's a lot of just repetitions and... Um, putting time in, um, I don't know, like, other than that, I think I think I like summarize the majority of it when it comes to like looking at how you're going to set a goal. You're like, for me, it is when I go to a tournament, ideally the goal is always to win. You never want to go in assuming you're not going to win. But, um, when it comes to a situation, say for example, you need to just get like top four to league cup for your invite or like top 64 to uh, regionals, you should cater your deck and how you play to that goal so if you're trying to go for the try to win the tournament you want to go for like a go for broke strategy right. but if it's like i just need top 64 um for example i'll use the last couple of months as an example like you can just pick up decidui and be like hey uh, this will be fine okay and um what what this is a bit off topic but what makes a deck um a good choice for top 64 as opposed to i need to win this tournament so basically, if you want to win the tournament, you know you have to go through a road of a lot of top players. And so you want to know what they're playing, more or less. And so you know you have to beat them. But uh, there, there's you're either playing the field or you're playing the top players. And you have to do finding that fine balance is how you end up winning the tournament. Because a lot of the top players have played the field. They know what the, to expect. Like, you, you kind of, like, guess what's coming for you. You're like... You beat all those players, and so if you're trying to go for that top 64 berth, you're just kind of go like 5 2, two six, three. You're not trying to beat everybody. You're just trying to get a couple of wins here and there. So if you think Evatol is going to be the biggest deck, for example, you can just show up with like Zeb Striker in your deck, and you'll hit four Evatols. That's four wins. Okay. Um, it's more playing the field than playing. Yeah, like if I like when I went to Madison, I knew that there would be. Uh, Vikavolt Bulus. I knew there'd be Metagross to some extent. I didn't think more than like one person would play it, but I knew Metagross would be there. So I knew that if I if my road to winning the tournament would be Metagross, I would have to play a Flareon. Okay. So just just basic ish stuff. Um. So do you write goals down, or do you tell people like I know you said you tested with Ryan. Do you tell Ryan your goals? Yes, um, definitely. You, okay. You write them down as well. I don't. I don't like write them down by like will have men i'll make like mental notes and i'll keep like reminding myself of like what i'm trying to do like if for, like i'll go to a tournament always wanting to win but i'll always have like a sub goal of like i'll be happy if i get here anything better is awesome like okay. like getting there's always like a day one goal into a day two goal like whenever i play regionals the immediate goal is i need to make day two once that goal is achieved then you look at your position and go i need to go from here to make top eight somehow yeah. But if like you get knocked out of top eight contention, but you're still in top sixteen, you gotta be like, I still gotta make top sixteen. So you gotta like reset your mind and like not let it affect you moving further. Okay. And um, what sort of um, so let me ask this instead. You are going for top sixteen this year, yeah. and that was a goal from the beginning. Uh, yes and no, like. I don't think any player aims to go for that top 16 slot until their season begins. You kind of just, like, start playing, and you're like, oh, hey, my season's going pretty well. 
you always want to just go for that world's invite because you don't want to get too greedy with it. Right. But like, once you've got that world's invite, you have to make that decision whether you want to put that time, money, investment into it. Because I know a couple of players that have gotten their 500 points and they just stopped. Like, I knew a friend who got it in like March or April. And he was just like, I'm chilling. Uh, I'll see you guys at like a couple of regionals maybe. But like, other than that, I don't really have a reason to play. Okay. So you have to make that decision of whether you want to put that time and money in. Because frankly, if you don't think you can make a return investment on it, it's not worth it. For a lot of players that are also in the race, like myself, I have probably spent the least amount of money compared to them because they've gone to Brazil, they've gone to London, they've gone to Australia. So for them, this is a lot more driven of a goal. For me, it's I've just been traveling locally, maybe spent... I, I've spent a lot less than they have, yeah. uh, realistically. So I, it's not like a crazy big goal for me. It's mine was just to like do well. I think going into Virginia and Canada, I said, if I do poorly at both of these tournaments... I don't think I stand a chance, so I will just bow out of the rest of the tournaments for the year. Okay, that's, but, that's um, another question. So, <laughs> so you you did well, and you said mm -hmm. top sixteen is possible. Um, yes. And then, do you say okay? What does each quarter need to look like? Like, do you, do you say I have to get one hundred points, or I have to get ninety points, or eighty points, or what did what did that look before the cup was boosted? The cup points were boosted. Before cups were boosted, it, it kind of came down to when cups were just cups for each quarter, I'd be like, I would like ideally a first and a second at each cup, okay. um, like at the very least. But uh, at, the, at the end of the day, getting just two finishes is more than you can ask for sometimes. Mm -hmm. Some quarters, for example, the second quarter was a lot easier because there was not that many tournaments. Um like big ones, not like that many regionals and stuff like that. So I didn't really have to like go anywhere. Right. I didn't have to like I could I could just go to a couple of locals and have a few weeks off to myself. But then quarter three was one of those where it's uh, we had the first two weekends be open for league cups and then regionals began. So if you were doing regionals that time, if you're doing Brazil, that was a heavy uh, hotspot. I think some players literally went to St. Louis, then went to Brazil. No, no, sorry. St. Louis, then Australia, then came back, did Utah, then did Brazil. And that was in like back to back to back to back weekends. Wow. I had taken that time off for school. Right. And uh, so I had time to go to those like small league cups. But I'll like look at that and I'll go, when I go to this this month of tournaments, like I'm putting in the money and investment for like these back to back weekends of tournaments, like Madison, Mexico or something like that. And I go, I'd like to ideally score 100 points off this weekend to see where my goal would be or i'd like to get a regionals finish just to finish like or i'd be like i want to get a top eight finish or replace a finish it's it's not more like i want x number of points it's more like i just want to fill this finish or i want this finish to be this good okay um and then do you do anything like um mental exercises or anything i know some people do those like um i'm going to tell three people I guess this is a mental exercise, but I'm going to tell three people what my goals are and they're going to keep me accountable or I'm going to envision myself, you know, winning this tournament or, um, it's, I wouldn't, uh, I would say like it's a, an exercise that I like consciously do, I think, but like when it's like always on my mind, like doing well and, um, having confidence, simply just to boost confidence. And I guess, like, I guess it's a mental exercise is, like, during the course of a tournament, not to lose sight of the goal. You know, you can't, like, a lot of players, what they'll do is they'll tilt and let a mistake from one round uh, ruin their next one or the, the one after. <laughs> I do and, and so, yeah, it happens to me, too. I'm, I'm pretty guilty of it. But um, what, I, what I'd like to do is if I, have a, if I have a hard loss or something where I, like, just, just I'm pissed, I'll, I'll just, like, put in my headphones, walk outside, and I just don't want to talk to anybody for a good five minutes. And like that, that because it's it's a high pressure game at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, a, a single tie, a single point could separate you from being in day two competing for five thousand dollars or sent packing home with like half a box in your hand. Yeah. It's um, you just got to be build confidence. That's I think the biggest thing doing any mental exercise is just like build your own confidence. Be confident in your deck choice. Don't second guess yourself throughout the day. Be like, if I had played this, I would have won this round. Well, you might have lost like round two if you had played that deck instead. Like, just, right. just go in there and, like, you've made this decision, you got to stick by it. Sometimes you'll go 0-3 drop, sometimes you could win the tournament. I've had, uh, I've made a deck decision before where I went 0-3 drop, like, right. once in my life at regionals. I literally went outside and I was like, man, that was a dumb decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
So you mentioned um, like with the top 16 thing, you don't really know you're doing it right away. And then you get to, there's like a make or break point where you say, here I'm going to be able to go or here I'm going to be able to say, no, I'm going to back off this. Exactly. Um, for short-term goals, do you have, like say, um, you said ideally I'm going to get 90 points or a first and a second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, if you miss a short-term goal, like say you got a first and then you didn't get a second finish, um, or say you got a second and a top third, fourth, do you <laughs> then, do you do something about that for next? Do you say, okay, now I need yep. to, what do you do there? Obviously, you're trying to pan it out so you get to the, the, the goal 500 for the season. So if you are a couple points short in one of the quarters, you have to be able to make it up somewhere else. you got to set another goal. If if you're willing and committed enough to get that world's invite, you should be able to do whatever it takes. So if, for example, I'm going to name a friend of mine, Jose Marrero. He has not been the best. He's, he hasn't had a breakout performance at a regionals this season. But he's been consistently getting top 64s, top 128s, getting those like small amounts of points. Mm -hmm. So before the bump, he knew that even with cups, he would be like he would have to fill all eight regionals finishes. So he knew that he would have to go to places like Puerto Rico, the special event, or like as many regionals as he could go to. Right. So, so you just gotta like set a sub goal for yourself. Going, if I don't hit this goal, what can I do to still get to that point threshold? What can I? do in my means like obviously don't break your bank but like right if you have the means to travel then you have to do something about it and um last big question do you have any advice for uh newer players who are maybe this season it was their first season and then they're gonna next season they want to you know plan out and go make goals and stuff like that do you have any advice sure. for them um Test with a good group, or like be be confident in your deck choice. Like if you don't ha you don't have to play everything. You don't have to be like, oh, this is the right deck for the tournament. Just play what you think you're good with. Um, odds are you're better versed than another deck, so you'll make less mistakes. Um, don't get discouraged. One bad tournament doesn't mean you're a bad player. It could just be a luck of the draw. It could just be <clears throat> something could have happened. It's just like it wasn't your day. It's as simple as that. Don't get discouraged. If you need to take a break, take a break. It's sometimes going to tournaments week after week after week can really do a number on your mental state. Um, I'm shocked I'm not burnt out right now. Um, I guess it's just because I love the game so much. Yeah. But <clears throat> it, it is a tough thing to do going for that world's invite. And if, if you need to take a step back and a breather, don't be afraid to do it. If you need to, if you need to tell yourself, I can't do it this season, don't be afraid to do that. If, if some seasons... If, if, if you're halfway through the season and you don't think you can do it, play, play with the goal of learning. Play with the goal of improving yourself for the next season. What, what can I take away from this season that'll be better? Because those are the things that I can't tell you. Those are the things that you have to learn for yourself while you're doing it. you gotta, you got to learn what's, what works best for you, in a sense. Um, and sometimes like, it could be knowing your deck before you get there so you avoid that like last-minute stress. Or you could be a person like me who's pretty much up till 4 a.m. figuring out what deck I'm playing the next day. <clears throat> it's just be confident, don't get upset, and don't give up. Like, <clears throat> eventually, you might not have, like, amazing results, but you'll start seeing your name up there once in a while. <clears throat> Very cool. And um, is there anything else you want to add about um, making goals, or do you want to give some shout-outs or anything? Sure. As far as making goals, just, like, have fun like always just have fun at the end of the day like I, I've, I've actually been a couple tournaments where my entire goal is just going i'm trying to have fun this weekend and if i do anything in the tournament that's a plus like when i did anaheim regionals <clears throat> that was a birthday gift from my parents because i had, i requested i was like do like what do you want and i was like oh there's like a like a one twenty dollar flight ticket on spirit could you book this for me and they're like yeah sure we'll do that and i was like awesome and so i did that and like my entire goal was just to i went out a couple days early just to hang out with friends uh, enjoy my birthday and just chill and if, any, if something better happens happens and like you don't have to put that pressure on yourself just just have fun sometimes and success will just come to you if you put in the hard work sometimes yeah. and uh, i guess for shout outs shout out to ccgcastle.com check them out uh use code ccg team five for five percent off your next order um we're pretty hype uh if you and also like other than that if you see me like nationals worlds anything just 
don't be afraid to come say hi. I always enjoy talking to people. Uh, I might not have like the lengthiest conversations with you if I see you. Sometimes, you know, I'm also in those high pressure moments, but I always appreciate um, just someone saying hi to me, um, telling me they enjoy my work. That actually like is super awesome to hear. So um, thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you for this opportunity, actually, to be on here. Yeah, thank you for your time. All right, we're here with Alex Cook, and um, we're talking about goal making. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? or um, yeah cool sure yeah no i'm i'm alex i'm from uh originally from seattle washington but i play in spokane washington um uh I, yeah <laughs> wow that's literally the only thing that should know uh i i'm a writer for pokey beach okay um i have been for about a year and a half two years now um I will be attending my third world championships in Anaheim this year. Um, and I'm probably most famous for uh, having three regionals top eights with Sableye Garbador. Okay, that's right. I didn't, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> um, very cool. So let's go right into goal making. Um, what are your goals for Pokemon, whether they're overarching goals or current goals for the season? Um, or what type of goals do you make? Yeah, so I think um, oh, the overarching and then per season goals are two different things. Um, uh, every every season I reassess my goal. So just for example, three years ago my goal was to make worlds, and it was the for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the year after that, um, it was to get top sixteen in NA. Um, and then this year it was to make day two worlds. Oh, wow. And there's there's reasonings behind all of those, and um, you know, you always hear like goals have to be uh, reasonable, achievable. Like goal is like, like someone somewhere created an acronym for it. Smart that goals. was like, yeah, like O stands for obtainable. I know that. It's um, um, it's smart goal. It's S is for specific, M is for measurable, A is for achievable, yeah. R is for relevant, and T is for time bound. There you go. Yeah. So I, you know, you don't, I think it's, you, you should just apply, you know, the Pokemon's no different than anything else. You should try to do something like that. So I figured, hey, getting to Worlds was achievable. And then last year I finished like 30th or something in points. So that top 16 was reasonable, but it just fell short. Mm -hmm. um, and then this year, you know, we still have to see how it's going to turn out making day two for a third time. But um I, I feel like if you set your, I feel like most people's blanket goals should be make worlds or, um, and that's where the competitive player sits, you know, mm -hmm. uh, newer players goals might be, um, uh, uh, do well at a regionals or, uh, play in a couple league cups or however. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. I have a lot of players in my area who, you know, they've started up recently in the last year and they go, okay, we know we're not making worlds this year. So our goal is to like go to Seattle regionals and Portland regionals and just go positive. And right. um, I think that's just kind of how it is. It, it, you know, it very depends on uh, like how long you've been playing and how much time you're willing to put into it. Just like, like I said, with any thing. Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. I don't know. I felt kind of yeah. rambly there. No, that's good. <laughs> Um, you answered the second question as well. Um, what do you, do you have, you mentioned small goals, goals as well, are overarching and seasonal goals. And you mentioned, um, going to worlds, getting second place, stuff like that. What are some of the other category for you? Uh, my, my overarching goal, like as a player is just to be, uh, respected, I think in both, uh, demeanor and, uh, performance ability mm -hmm. so when i sit down next to an opponent they know they're going to have fun but they know they're going to have a challenge and i think that is kind of i don't know me personally that's just like all i've ever wanted was to be known as a good player both in spirit and performance so mm -hmm. uh everything that i've ever done has been leading up to that whether that be um you know, I, I make sure to offer everybody a piece of gum every single game. Hmm. So, like, get off on the right foot. Like, hey, man, here's some gum. And they're like, this dude's going to be cool. And I'm like, yeah, he is. <laughs> or, you know. Uh, and then, you know, practice every day. I mean, 
yeah i, I guess Practicing that answers it enough every day okay. i mean it's the practice you know um practice you know i'm not good at pokemon i'm not i just play a lot okay. um and i you know, it's it's with a, a sport it's with um whatever your passion or hobby is with a drawing climbing you know anything that you do the more time you put into it the better you get out of it sure. and i think a lot of pokemon players that are new to the game kind of don't understand that because it's like oh this is a hobby this is for fun but i want to go to worlds and it's like well right. you you're gonna have to put the time in and for me i don't have a lot of natural ability at this game but i have a lot of free time so okay. that's where it comes um, from do you have small goals, like goals for tournaments? When you go into a tournament, are you thinking, I want to make day two, or I want to make top eight, or I want to win? What Do you do that, or is it just sort of I go and – or your goal is more um, seasonal goals? I, I think it's more leaning towards seasonals because every season's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't go into every tournament saying, if I don't win, I, I failed at this tournament. Like, yeah, everybody wants to win, Um but we all, you know, you also have to remember that the penultimate goal for everybody is usually worlds. Right. And, you know, I just, I, I need points. If I go to an event and I get points, I'm happy with my performance. Okay. Um, that being said, that might be the reason why I've never won a regionals, but, um, that's, yeah, yeah. You know. I think, I think if, if you are too laser focused on like, I need to win, I need to win, I need to win, you lose sight of, uh, both what it means to like play for an entire season and what it means to have fun while you play. Right. Um, Cause we all do this for fun. No one makes a living off of, not many people make a living off Pokemon. So right. we're all doing it for, for fun at least I think. So yeah. <laughs> can't um, lose out of that. When you chosen your seasonal goal, like making day two at worlds or whatever, do you, what do you do with that? Do you write it down? Do you tell people? Like, what do you do with your goal? I, I, I tell a couple close friends right off the bat that's like, you know what, I'm happy with this, this um, uh, season. And then I'll, I'll tell people, if we ever get into a conversation of that, like some people are like, oh man, look, I'm just trying to, this is the only tournament I haven't playing this year, I'm just looking for this. And I'm like, well, I'm just trying to get this. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I know the philosophy of like writing it down and sticking it on your fridge and seeing it every day, but um Pokemon's not the number one thing in my life, so right. uh, I don't need to do that. But yes, um, uh, reminding yourself, I think before a tournament starts, reminding me like, okay, look, I'm just looking for points, or you know, hey, I'm getting getting to Worlds. So, and, and it's every year. Every year that I get to Worlds, every tournament after that is a blast. It's my favorite tournament. But until then, it's awful. So right. Um, so. You talked about all the practice and time you put in. Um, are there, what else do you do to help yourself reach your goals? Are you, do you do any like envisioning yourself winning or you mentioned um, telling people, I guess that's partly to keep yourself accountable and for it to be more real when you tell mm -hmm. someone. Um, uh, I like how you said envisioning winning because um, I, I drive to nationals every year and right now I'm in St. Louis, um, my way down from Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've had nothing but time. And I just like think, I'm thinking to myself, like, wouldn't it be cool to win? Like, so it's been in my head just because like my mind does hit every single subject. And it's, it was on that for like an hour and a half when I was stuck in traffic today. I was like, that would be really cool. Um, but uh, no, to mentally, uh, other things that I do, I mean, uh, it's listen to everything and anything. Um, I think there's two things that I can say on that. One is, yeah, listen, like subscribe to every YouTube channel and read every article, mm -hmm. you know, um, there, you know, there's, you can't get worse by doing any of those things. Right. Um, because point number two is that you have to remember everyone is just one person. It, it's one person's opinion most of the time. So you can't, even if it's the person you respect, even if it's the best player in your eyes saying, Hey, I think the best deck is this that's still just one person. Right. And the other 1,000, 2,000 people that are going to be at Nats, for instance, are going to be thinking something else. So you can't change your mind off of one person's thing. Um, so that's why you should try to just, you know, uh, cast a big net and get everything you can possibly get and then make your own decisions based off 
everything you've heard. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, so in summation, the best way to prepare for a tournament is to listen to everything and anyone and ask questions of people. Don't be afraid to message people and ask them their opinion. Yeah. Um, I, when I, I mean, like, I think one of the best things for a new player, if they're wanting to make that next jump, is to get like 20 people, 20 random people that they think are good and message them just out of the blue. Um, mostly people are good people and they will respond. So like, I think that's the best way to learn is just by asking. So I've been impressed by how many people are willing to like do interviews and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah everyone, it's amazing what people will do when you ask. Um, yeah, exactly. Most people are just scared to ask. <laughs> yeah. So, um, last big question. Um, what do you do if say you don't reach your goal or you realize like, Oh, this is not attainable for me. Um, I don't know. It sounds like you, your big seasonal goals, which are your main goals, you've, you've hit. But I don't know, maybe if your first year or the year before, like four years ago, if you missed it. What, um, what, what do you do if you realize a goal is unattainable or if you don't reach a goal? Um, you know, last, last year my goal was to top 16. And right. um, for, for the most part, I was, I was on pace until around April or so. I was still like – in a good position to get there. Um, so at that point it was, you know, you find the silver lining, I guess you go, Hey, look, at least I'm at worlds or, at, you know, at least I'm going to have fun with it. And then you can adjust it to something maybe smaller or just say, Hey, look, not this year, next year, I'll make something a little bit easier for me to obtain. And that's kind of where this year was. It was, you know, make worlds then, top 16 didn't get it so then this year was like okay day two worlds I, you know i think that's okay i think i can i think i'm a good enough player by now that i can make day two or not make day two but make worlds so um it was kind of a goal within a goal so right if you don't make it one season then i would adjust it for next season instead of mid-season adjusting it okay. you know i guess that's just me yeah that makes sense yeah. um is there anything else about goal making that you want to mention or are there any shout outs that you want to give or anything like that? Um, I don't think anything much more on goal making. I think the big point, you know, like I said, is if it's one person. Um, when I first started, I would hear something from someone. Like I would hear one person say, Hey, I'm playing deck a. And then I'd be like, Oh man, that beats me. I have to switch my deck. Right. And it's like, well, that's one person still like the other 300 people might be playing something different. So, um, I think that's the best piece of advice I can give, I guess. I don't know. Um, on that subject. Uh, and then shout outs to Pokey Beach and Spokane people and the, those, the list, I guess. So. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks, man.